JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs just boosted their S&P 500 targets on vaccine news. The market nirvana continues on news of a promising vaccine. JP Morgan now sees S&P rising up to 4,500 by end of 2021. Goldman Sachs from its side boosted its year-end price target on the S&P 500 to 3,700 from 3,600. Goldman Sachs strategists led by David Koston say the vaccine is a more important development for the economy and markets than the prospective policies of a Biden presidency. Amazing what a market can do with infinite printing. The S&P 500 quintupled in value from 2009 to 2020. While we may not see another quintupling over the next 10 years, we should see at least a doubling. Look for S&P 500 at 6,000 plus, Dow Jones at 50,000 plus, and Nasdaq at 20,000 plus before this decade is out. And just imagine three times funds. S&P is only 3% from record highs. Wall Street always wins. Main Street and the little people are irrelevant. Getting the small people to beg for more central bank debt to make Wall Street richer. The Fed is pumping them for the next Venezuela level. With pensions facing unprecedented redemptions as boomers retire, the Fed owning the once free market is the de facto bailout of the financial system. While USA goes Zimbabwe style. Who needs an economy when we have a booming stock market? Not to worry, this will prompt more stimulus, which means even higher stock prices. A bad economy is a piece of good news for stocks. That means that the Fed will print trillions more for Wall Street in the hope that a few pennies will trickle down to Main Street. The stimulus for Americans gets smaller while the stimulus for Wall Street gets bigger. The market isn't raging, the dollar is falling. The disconnect between markets and reality grows to distortionary proportions. Venezuela circa eight years ago here, as they inflate past the 30 trillion debt number. That number doesn't even factor in the 12 trillion in Fed QE that is unlimited in value and price. We desperately need a 30-year bear market to wipe out all these Fed welfare prostitutes and Ponzi pumpers. These Ponzi pumpers come out every day blowing smoke up each other's backs as to why their Ponzi portfolios should go up every day forever devoid of any economic reality. Reckless idiots have been constantly rewarded while anyone who is just trying to save or use the slightest bit of fundamental analysis to make an investment decision has been utterly destroyed. This sick joke has gone on for far too long, and it needs to end. Don't forget, this started with the collapse of the repo market in September 2019. The pandemic was just the accelerant to the demise of the dollar and the US empire. The message from Wall Street remains the same, heads I win, tails you lose. I wish I could be half as optimistic as these humps. Every day would be a paradise. Of course, when you are playing with OPM, why wouldn't it be? We live in absolutely insane times. This market is a joke because the currencies that back it are a joke because the governments that support it through force and fraud are the biggest joke. But really, the joke is on us because the people actually believe that it's all real. They believe that it can all go on forever. They believe that you can get something from nothing. I'm so optimistic about a catastrophic near-term event that undoes all of the lies. With a maximum devastation so that humanity can find enough pain to free them from the illusions of the matrix. Stop believing any of this sheet is real, and stop giving it any time or attention to the best of your ability. Be simple, and live free. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to click the like button. As many of you have asked me about where they can buy silver and gold bullion. You will find in the description box the links where I personally buy American Silver Eagle, Silver Bars and Rounds. I highly recommend that you too, start stacking some silver bullion for the future. In 2020, the world is a Ponzi scheme of inflated asset prices. The use of neoclassical economics and the belief in free markets made them think that inflated asset prices represented real wealth accumulation. The central banks have to keep pumping in liquidity to stop all the Ponzi schemes from collapsing. When banks have been lending to inflate asset prices, the financial system is in a precarious state and can easily collapse. The central bankers were struggling to keep all these Ponzi schemes going before the pandemic. S&P could easily hit 45,000. No typo. They have the means to do it, but a decent pizza will cost $1,700.
Stock market investors are expecting today the Weimar-style hyperinflation to increase the stock prices to unprecedented heights in what some may call a crack-up boom. We're still not there yet in terms of money creation. However, these levels of fiat printing are expected to happen until next year. And even though it is unlikely that this boom in stocks will happen again in the future, it did happen over the last few years, and maybe now it had hit its finishing point. Over the last couple of months, the US dollar has entered a colossal liquidity crisis, and regardless of all expectations, the Fed's efforts to compensate with stimulus actions did very little to boost the market back to its golden days. In Weimar's Germany, stocks hit a remarkable rally until everything crashed in 1942 and then again in 1927. The idea of an endless fiat-driven bull market is a gross lie backed by bankers and their suspicious supporters. As we well know by now, by the time the Fed finally took action to intervene and stop the crash, it was already too late. It isn't really in the Fed's interest to really cease this crash, it's actually exactly what they're going for. They designed all the necessary conditions to create this bubble, and their goal now is to make it seem that they had done all they could to save the economy while they're still plotting the final stroke of the bubble collapse to hit the US dollar and its status as a global reserve currency. The outburst we're living in is not the only problem markets are facing right now. The real deal is that the main support pillars for equities, which really means corporate stocks buybacks, had vanished. It is thought that the new bailouts will develop a ban for this practice in the future, leading market values to drop unless central banks intervene directly buying stocks. But the active values will still drop eventually, probably at a slower pace. It is important to remember the trillions of dollars in loans that had been feeding corporate share prices through buybacks during the past few years were turned into dust because of the downturn. Companies have been using the central bank's repurchase agreements to stimulate stocks at all costs. Over the last three years, the valuations had been outrageous comparing with the absurd earnings of these same companies. In a few words, wasted cash and companies, debt up to their heads. With all that said, it is certain that soon they will no longer care about this. CEOs know that even though their companies may stumble during this multifaceted crisis, they will still be well assisted. Bankers, CEOs, government leaders know they are not going to be held accountable for the financial catastrophe that is coming for us. Same as in 2008, they're going to get out from this untouched, and their actions are going to be forgotten. The only way out being still an enraged enough public to make them pay for what they did with torches and pitchforks. But for now, people are still wrapped up by the drama regarding the disease and its symptoms, and the global economic concerns haven't hit their doorsteps yet. That soon will change by the time they realize this episode is far from an ending. Even if the number of infected people considerably drops during the next couple of months, governments may still use lockdowns as an excuse. And if lockdowns are proven to work, they will keep happening. It is possible for governments to use the wave model conditioning to allow the brief public moments of lockdown lift that will last probably less than a month and will be followed by a resurgence of infections, leading to hard lockdowns one more time. And they're not expected to disappear any sooner since we have a 7 billion worldwide population, and there is still a lot to happen before this fades away. This will escort us to a never-ending cycle of suppressed business activities, businesses' downfalls, unemployment, and supply shortages. Governments and central banks had designed this scenario where the only way out is through monetary policies and universal basic income. Considering the eventual implementation of the Defense Production Act, the US dollar will drop at levels never seen before, and the Fed will have to finance corporations directly through stock purchasing, or the governments will do so, and the Fed will have to finance the governments with groundbreaking levels of debt. The US treasuries are literally being thrown away by foreign central banks that were forced by the liquidity crisis to sell their assets in order to accumulate dollars, and with the Fed moving towards an infinite-like stimulus model, US treasuries don't seem to be a viable mean to make a profit from or for wealth protection. Consequently, the central bank may become the only buyer left to fund the US government. The elites are about to become the main provider for everyone that isn't self-sufficient. Small businesses are closing, large corporations are in huge debt, people are losing their income and their jobs, and this will guide us to a massive level of dollar creation to keep the system running, and we're talking about tens of trillions of dollars. There isn't even a remote chance that the dollar as we know, will survive this scenario. It will lose its value continuously, 
create inflation, and lastly, lose its global reserve status. But as scary as that sounds, the elites have known about this already and in fact, they benefit from it. First things first, a major downfall of small businesses is expected, and its assets are going to be absorbed into the banks and large corporations. Even the government bailouts won't be enough to ensure their survival. Just as it happened during the Great Depression, trade and production will be captured and devoured by the 1% of the 1%. Then, in order to test their modern monetary theory model, the establishment will lead the public to accept the idea of a monthly universal basic income that won't be enough to maintain the third world standard of living, but it will sound like a better alternative than starvation in an aggravated economic circumstance. Ultimately, with the contagiousness of the disease alongside with the dollar downfall, a perfect scenario will be set to push the implementation of a long-desired dream of the elites, a cashless society. By the end of next year, the dollar's status as a global reserve is going to get questioned, meanwhile, the idea of a digital currency will be publicly discussed. Eventually, the public's choice will come down to bowing down to a new digital currency or beginning to create their own local systems. And it seems that the future doesn't get any prettier than that. It is only a matter of time before the devaluation of the dollar hits up to 80%, and this can be a dead end for our lifelong savings. Makes exactly zero difference to us peasants who the emperor is or what party he comes from. But institutions and funds are very excited about continued cheap 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 money. They only want the present rigged financial arrangements to continue smoothly and indefinitely, with no change. Just keep shoveling that wealth from the masses to themselves. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.